on page 55 of our textbook, um, if you look on box 310, it says practice based evidence exemplar stroke rehabilitation. Um, this is just an example about PBE. Um, it says an integrated healthcare system determined that outcomes were highly variable for patients following a stroke. Rehabilitation professionals in the geographic region were polled to determine the local standards of care and the interventions were quite diverse. A regional task force was convened, convened representing quite uh, representing eight hospitals from two care delivery systems, as well as an independent hospital. The task force was led by a rehabilitation nurse and a physical therapist. A PBE study was initiated to determine what combinations of medical devices, therapy, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, medications, feeding, and nutritional approaches worked best for various subtypes of stroke patients in real world, real world practices. So again, that comes back to like the current real world aspect of this PBE studies. Um, a multi multidisciplinary project clinical team was convened of, I'm sorry, I just got an email. Of convened of physicians, nurses, social workers, psychologists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, recreational therapists, and speech language therapists. Post stroke patients and caregivers were also invited to participate. The first decisions of the group addressed the outcome variables, including the functional independence measure, or FIM, scale score, length of stay in rehabilitation, discharge disposition, mortality, and morbidity, contraction, deep vein thrombosis, major bleeding, pulmonary embolism, pressure ulcer, and pneumonia. Each profession identified possible interventions and developed documentation for the components of the intervention and the intensity, uh, number of repetitions for each exercise and either in time required. Documentation was incorporated into the standard EHR, or electronic health record document documentation. Over a two-year period, uh, 1,461 patients were studied, ranging from 18.4 to 95.6 years of age. Collected patient-related data included uh, age, gender, race, payer stroke risk factors, and FIM scores. Detailed process and outcome data were collected. Severity of illness was determined using the CSI scale there were significant differences in the average severity of illness at the eight sites. There was also heterogeneity in the intensity of therapies, use of tube feedings, and use of psychotropic and opioid medications. Following control for severity of illness, univariate and multivariate uh, analysis of the data determined that factors were positively and negatively associated with the FIM scores at discharge. Uh, after additional studies to replicate findings, the participating hospitals initiated the following policy changes in the treatment of stroke patients. Several of these are noble interventions that would not have been identified without the PBE study method. Continuous quality improvement monitoring was implemented to document adherence and outcomes. Early rehabilitation remission, uh, patients are admitted to rehabilitation as soon as possible and therapy begin in the intensive care unit if possible. Early gait training by physical therapy. Patients are put in a harness on a treadmill for safety, but gait training is initiated as soon as possible, even in the most affected patients. Early feeding. If patients are not able to, feed, to eat a full diet, early internal feedings, nutritional supplements, tube feedings are initiated. Opioids for pain. Opioids are ordered as an admission for any time the patient misses therapy because of pain. So hopefully this um, brings some light to what exactly a PBE study is and again just the current practices compared to the guide of practices with evidence-based practice. So I think that um, it can be uh, that they're both integrated into each other honestly because you can't really have a guide for practice without knowing how it works. So if you implement it, that would be the current practice-based evidence. Uh, in conclusion, um, healthcare 
it can be dangerous when working with patients, so it's important to keep in mind um, what we learn from the evidence-based practice and practice-based evidence. Um, lots of healthcare workers don't um, use these, they're very underused, and um, that causes uh, problems within the healthcare system itself. Um, like I had said before, both evidence-based practice and practice-based evidence are integrated within each other. You can't really have one without the other. I mean, you can have evidence-based practice, but it, it's more along the lines of it's better if you have both. Um, only by using evidence-based practice and practice-based evidence together, provide providers can make best practice decisions to give the best care possible to patients. Um, so going forward, creating these um, hypotheses are what make um, healthcare workers able to see what their actions are and see if they do something right or see something what they do is wrong. Like um, if they see that they're getting more clotties, they can try to implement something that fixes that or if they see that their cloudy infections are down um well you know that their cloudies are down then they would um see that oh they're doing something correct so that's what helps um implement like be best practice into play and um, so that's what creates uh high quality and cost effective care and that's really what you want is the high quality care to your patients. Thanks, bye. <laughs>